It's a little blustery out here this week, but I'd like to take you inside the greenhouse and show you some of the nice plants that we have coming into bloom this week. I'll mention on the way to the greenhouse, we do have our spring seeds coming in and we'll be getting more in all the time. Uh, right now uh, behind me we have the hearts rack and uh, this is, we've got the typical, uh, I shouldn't say typical, there's some really neat garden seeds on here. Uh, uh, from Hard Seed, they're a company out of Connecticut. They, uh, we've been dealing with them for over 30 years. Uh, still a family-owned business. They've been in business since since uh, 1892, and we uh, have always really enjoyed working with them. Uh, so we we have some Hard Seeds in. We have the botanical interest rack is in, and the uh, burpee rack should be coming in soon. We're starting to get the seed starting supplies in. So those of you who want to get a jump start on spring, we are starting to re receive uh, some of the uh, spring seed starting supplies in. This week we have. Ponderosa lemon here. This is, uh, you can see the fruit on the lemon is as large as my hand. And these lemons can actually get larger than this. So this isn't your standard lemon. They're quite impressive and they keep quite a long time. Unfortunately, it's a difficult plant to propagate and we've been trying for years to get this to root. We finally have gotten some and you can see it's actually beautiful. All these flowers, they smell wonderful. Uh, the big waxy flowers and you've got a lot more fruit coming here. They haven't even started to size up yet. But if you want something really unusual, we actually have finally gotten a small batch of these to root. Uh, they're not the, the least expensive lemons you'll ever buy, but they are really unusual. And uh, we finally been able to get a small quantity that, to have for sale and we'll uh, go on over. We're gonna put this one out kind of as a mannequin so you can see what they uh, look like as a mature plant. We'll have some smaller pots, which we'll go over and take a look at for sale. Grow huge lemons indoors. We have a very small supply of these ponderosa lemons and you can see even in the pot here the um, flower buds on those ready to go so it's gonna look a little funny with a lemon uh, that large on a small plant but <laughs> anyhow they are ready to go and like I says the, we did have uh, you know we had to root quite a few cuttings to get these but we finally do have some available something I'd like to mention real quickly we do have some other citrus here that we've rooted um, th this one here is a little chlorotic uh, and the reason I mention it is because this is a common problem with citrus. So if you have any citrus at home or uh, if you're planning on buying any citrus, we'll actually hit this with a little liquid iron to green it up for you. But just so you know, I, the reason I, I bring it to uh, attention, you can see the, the green veins in the leaves, but the yellow leaves. That is easily remedied with a little liquid iron, which we sell uh, here at the garden center. These ones will probably hit it, so by the time you get it home, it'll green up uh, very quick acting. Usually a couple days, it'll green it right up but they are commonly uh, deficient in iron, and that's a classic example right there. So if you have any citrus at home, just uh, liquid iron. We also have a few bear's limes in small pots and a, a few Myers lemon as well uh, uh, in the pots, you know, very small, three and a half inch pots, but a fun way to start them. Uh, I'll mention too, uh, real quickly, we have a little bit of the columnar basil. Uh, it's one of the basils that do well for indoor culture. It does grow upright, a little more columnar, which is good if you're tight on space. But uh, some some basils don't do well inside, but the columnar basil and the African blue basil we have as well. I like the flavor a little better on uh, some on the uh, columnar. Some people like the African blue. Uh, we've been selling the African blue for quite a few years, and some people have developed uh, kind of, a, I guess, a, a palette for it. But uh, if you're going to try inside, uh, the Genovese and stuff don't, it doesn't always work that well inside this time of year. The columnar basil is the way to go. And actually, while I'm talking about indoor fruit, again, uh, I've sold most of these, but uh, we only have about two or three more of these plants. But this is uh, a dwarf fig, and I've never really been able to get great figs that I've been crazy about around here. This is actually, I've, once these figs ripen, they actually taste like strawberries. They, they actually are really worth growing. Uh, again, not many of these plants left. We've been propagating these as well. We'll have more coming along shortly, but I just mention it because they're sitting right here. Something else that might be of interest to the winter gardener is we have a small starter kit for hydroponics here. And we've actually, a couple weeks ago, we put some herbs in here. And I'm just noticing the spearmint now is getting large enough to cut. So somebody who might be a little limited on space or light. Uh, we also have the little grow light set up so you can get as well, but it allows you to get a few, a uh, little taste of fresh herbs in the winter without needing a lot of space or even light in, in the, uh, for that case. And like I said, I'm just cutting back the spearmint so it'll bush out a little bit better, but also so I can steal the spearmint. Uh, and we'll just cut those free, but 
again, just something that might be of interest uh, if you're interested in growing things hydroponically. Not for everybody, but it's kind of fun and doesn't take a lot of space in the house. Another plant that I'd like to draw some attention to is the African gardenia or uh, Mitrostigma. It's a great little house plant, not very well known. You can see these uh, waxy white flowers in there with a little tinge of pink in them. But the plant is literally always in bloom, especially in the winter. Not only that, it's uh, very, very fragrant. And it's, it's a wonderful plant, always in bloom, uh, nice glossy green foliage. And you can keep it small, Something or uh, you know, right here behind me we have some hangers, which is nice if you've got a spot for the hanger in the house. And it's, uh, again, just a real good plant, always in bloom. Uh, big thing with them, just don't overwater them. You, you don't want to dry them out, but uh, don't overwater them in the winter. Let them run a little towards dry and then water them real good. Uh, you know, half a day or more of light and uh, they'll do fine. They probably prefer a little more light if you can give it to them. And, uh, but a real great plant and um, I'm actually looking across the aisle here too. I see another plant I'd like to take a look at, uh, another type of jasmine. And uh, those are just starting to bud out. Okay, I've changed greenhouses again. And what I actually wanted to talk about was this uh, jasmine, jasmine, jas, jasminum polyantha, and has the star-shaped uh, flowers. And this one here is a large display plant we have. Most people wouldn't grow it, you know, this large, just because we don't have a place to put it in the winter. Uh, we have the greenhouse, of course, so we can do it, and it's, it's quite impressive. Uh, the fragrance on these is wonderful. It's pro probably one of my favorite fragrant plants. It's, it's a... Um, pleasing fragrance versus, you know, something that would be rather stinky rather than fragrant. Um, I, again, I really enjoy it and it's always interesting to see people try to find this plant in the greenhouse because they can smell it and when they finally find it there's a lot of excitement. Um, this one here we actually have grown. This might work better into somebody's house. We've actually trained them around into almost a loop because uh, it's a vining plant. But the reason I think it's a great time to be talking about them is because these are all budded. They haven't even opened yet. So they're coming into bud and you have some really tight buds on these. So you're going to get a lot of enjoyment. And these are actually a winter bloomer. So this is the time to get them is, is right now. We also have a small quantity of these on trellises too in six inch pots grown up into a little trellis if you don't want a hanging plant. Uh, but again, a great, great winter bloomer if you're looking for something and very fragrant. Uh, real nice plant to have this time of year. Here we are in the cold house, and this is actually home to our succulent cacti collection. Uh, you can see behind me we have several cacti, most of which we've uh, started ourselves. We grow them in small pots, which are great for dish gardens, uh, as well as just a starter plant. You can start in the house into a larger, eventually move them up into larger plants as, or larger pots rather, as they grow. They also make, a lot of them make nice hangers. Some of these small uh, this is actually related to a string of pearls here uh, that uh, these you can put them right into uh, the Senecios, you can put them right into a hanger, a few of those and they'll actually cascade down real easy to care for hanger and uh, as I said we are in one of our cooler houses a lot of people think you need heat to grow the cacti and succulents but if you run your house a little cold they don't mind one bit. Uh, one of the few things that survived my room as a child was succulents so east west facing windows are fine for succulents and cacti uh, they're a lot more rugged uh, at the lower temperatures than we give them credit for. Here you can see some of the different colors, textures, and blooms on the various succulents. Some, we have some variegated forms. Uh, a lot of them make little rosettes, which is kind of unusual. But again, like I said, it's just giving you a sampling here of uh, some of what's available. Really up to your imagination how you put them together. I'd like to take you right over here and talk about a few of these. Uh, if you just take a look, we have some smaller pots of cacti, all different variations, and uh, again, really easy to, to care for, all sorts of selection in cacti in uh, different sized pots. But again, a, a nice uh, house plant, a lot of different unusual textures to choose from. And we are having a, uh, the reason I mention them is we are having a, a cactus and succulent dish garden class this weekend. It's a make and take class. If you want to come in, it's just the cost of the supplies, no charge for the class, just the cost of the supplies that you use. And we'll be putting together some dish gardens. Uh, I believe we, if we fill the first time slot, we'll be adding a second time slot on that on uh, this Saturday. So we hope to see you there on Saturday. And uh, we have uh, all sorts of different textures you'll be able to choose from out here in the greenhouse and make your own custom dish garden.